Okay, so today we're going to let you into a little trade secret, how we optimize Windows 11 as professionals to make it run at its best, to try and reduce the number of pop-ups that you get on screen, the number of nags that you get from Microsoft, and how to generally overall improve its performance and keep it running in tip-top condition, not start slowing down from day one. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. Well, the first thing I do is when I see one of these systems brand new, I've, I set it up and the first thing I do is I check to see whether or not it's encrypted. And to do that, I click on the start button, click on settings and then up in the find a setting up the top there, I just type the word encryption. Now, some systems are encrypted, might sound the responsible thing to do, but if you've got no sensitive personal information on your computer, then it's probably not a good idea to keep it encrypted simply because if Windows ever crashes, then it's going to be a heck of a lot harder and in some cases impossible to get back into your system and recover your files unless you know your encryption key or unless you've got a backup of your files. So as I say, I've typed in encrypt at the top there and I, I, I've seen this come up, device encryption settings, left click once on that. And as I can see there to the right of device encryption, it's turned on. So as I say, with this turned on, okay, it makes the system more secure. If your laptop was lost or stolen, then nobody would be able to gain access to your files on there. But if Windows crashes, which there's more of a chance of Windows crashing than you losing your laptop or having it stolen, then it's going to make it impossible to get back in, like I say, unless you've got a copy of your recovery key. So I turn that off. And once I click on off, it says there, if you do this, your files won't be protected and decryption can take a long time. So it's trying to put you off. So I'm just going to click on turn off. And then what you'll see is you'll see that blue line go from left to right on the screen. And yet it might take some time to do this. So leave it on this screen until that blue line has gone all the way over to the right. Don't try and come out of this because you could interrupt the process. Don't power the computer off either. And if you're running a laptop and it's running off battery, perhaps plug it in at this point so that it doesn't run out of battery midway through decryption. And there you go. Once that blue bar's disappeared, then it's finished decrypting and you can move away from this page. So what I do next is I click on system just over there on the left and then I go into notifications and we're going to turn off a lot of notifications here. So first of all, click on the little drop down to the right of notifications. And what I normally do is I normally take the tick out of show notifications on the lock screen. And I also take the tick out of show reminders and incoming VOIP calls on the lock screen. I leave allow notifications to play sounds because those are those sort of dings when a notification comes up on the screen. But if you want to stop it from dinging, then you can untick that one too. Next thing is to go down to this section here. And I would say if you don't use OneDrive, then turn that off. Turn off suggested. Those stop those little boxes from coming up in the bottom right hand corner, suggesting things that Microsoft want to suggest. And just go through the list here. And if you see anything in there that you think you don't need turning on or left turned on, then turn it off. You can always come back here and turn it on again if there are any problems. And then there's this little hidden section here called additional settings. Click on the little drop down arrow just to the right and I turn all three of these off. Again, stops a lot of things popping up on the screen from Microsoft, just things that they're trying to suggest to you that you don't really need to do. So then I go back to system up there and then I go down to multitasking, snap windows. If you're a user of Windows 7, 8 or 10, then a a snap window is basically when you move your mouse up to here, you get these boxes here. Now you don't have that in Windows 7, 8 or 10. If you don't want those to come up, turn that off. 
nothing comes up when you put your mouse over that little icon up there in the top right hand corner. I should say all of these that I'm showing you here today are optional. You don't have to turn them off. It's up to you. And then I want to go to network and internet. Up here, you've got properties. And as you can see there, it's got public network. Now this closes down some bits on your computer. If you were using it on a public network, then okay, public network is fine. But if you're using it at home, then what I would say is click on the word public network. If you've got public network there, and then just click on the little circle just to the left of private network. And that opens a few things up. It might help you, you know, if you're connecting something else to your computer or allowing something else access to your computer in the future, then uh, it makes it easier for it to communicate with your computer on the network. But obviously, if you're using this at work or on a network that other public users use, then I would still keep public network selected. So let's just click on personalization next. Right here, if we go into background, at the moment we've got Windows Spotlight, which gives us these lovely little backgrounds. They change on a daily basis, but it might be that you don't want those. It, it, these call out to the internet to get those backgrounds. They don't take up a lot of resources, but if you're on a limited internet connection or a, a, a inter internet connection that charges per megabyte, then you might not want this. You might just want to use a local wallpaper or a solid color. So you can click on picture there if you want to use just a built-in picture from Microsoft. And if I, if I select, say, that picture there and go back there, there you go, that's just a standard picture. Or if I want to, to speed things up a bit, I can go for a solid color and select a color just like this one here. And there you go, plain boring, but easy to see and doesn't slow your computer down as much. I'm going to go back to personalization now and I'm going to click on colors. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off transparency effects. Now, transparency is you can see with it on, you'll be able to see a slight color behind some of the menus. This can take up a bit of power from your graphics card. OK, nowadays, graphics cards are much more powerful than they used to be, but it still can slow your system down that tiny little bit. And all these little tweaks individually don't do much, but together, collectively, they can do a whole lot. So let's just go back to personalization. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into lock screen and here I'm going to take the picture off of the lock screen, this, this sort of picture here. And I'm just going to go to picture, just have a boring picture. I'm going to take the tick out of get fun facts, tips and tricks and more on your lock screen because I don't want things popping up on the lock screen. I'm also going to, in under lock screen status, you've got weather and more there. Well, I don't want all these little boxes appearing on the home screen or the lock screen because again, these call out to the internet to get information and they take up a little bit of processing power. So I'm going to click none just there. I can even go as far as turning off show the lock screen background picture when I'm on the sign on screen. So I, I can turn that off and I do often do that. So leave that off. I'm going to click on personalization again on the left and I'm now going to go to the start section. Click on start. And from here, I'm going to turn off show account related notifications. I'm also going to turn off show recommendations for tips, shortcuts, new apps and more. Next, I'm going to click on apps just over there on the left. And then I'm going to click installed apps just just at the top. And I'm going to have a look through this list and anything that I don't use, then I'm going to remove. So for instance, like family here, I remove that. I, I don't use the Microsoft family app. So I'm going to click on the three dots just to the right of it and then click uninstall and then click uninstall again. I don't use games on here, so I can get rid of game assist. So Again, click on the three dots and then click on uninstall and then click on uninstall again. Incidentally, there are some things that you can't install. Like, for instance, if I click on the three dots just to the right of Microsoft Bing, as you can see, uninstall is grayed out. We can't do anything about those, so don't worry. So I'm going to carry on scrolling down. And again, as I say, I don't play games, so I can get rid of Xbox there. Again, click on the three dots, click on uninstall and then click on uninstall again. 
and that removes that and also xbox live i don't do xbox live so three dots uninstall and then uninstall again and like i say if there's anything else that you don't use on this menu then you can get rid of it you can get it back by just going to the app store if you want to which is this little store just down the bottom there so next up i'm going to go into gaming just over there on the left because as i say i don't do any gaming on here and game bar i'm going to click on that and i'm going to turn off allow your controller to open game bar and then the next thing to do is to click on privacy and security on the left and then click on Windows Security at the top and then click on Open Windows Security. And then if you've got, say, for instance, underneath a virus and threat protection, if you don't use the cloud, if you don't use OneDrive, then just click on Dismiss if that is showing there set up OneDrive. That just gets rid of that. Account protection, if you're signing in with a local account, i.e. you're not signing in with a Microsoft account, then again, it's okay to click dismiss under sign in and account protection and app and browser control. Now, for some reason, this often comes up. So you can click on turn on there, then click on yes. And that should sort that out. But that might go back. So you might have to come back and do that again later on. The memory integrity thing, I generally ignore that. It's probably the wrong thing to do. But on a couple of systems, I've found by turning device security on, what it's actually done is it's actually caused some drivers not to function properly, like webcams, printers and sound. So generally, I just dismiss that and then click yes. As long as your virus and threat protection and your firewall and network is showing the green tick, then I think that should be pretty much OK. So close that down by clicking on the cross just up there in the top right hand corner of the Windows security box and then click on privacy and security again and then click on general just here and I turn off this show me notifications in the settings app. I also turn off show me suggested content in the settings app. And if it's on, I also turn off let apps show my, me personalized ads by using my advertising ID. Then you want to click on privacy and security again, just over there on the left and then go into diagnostics and feedback. Now, when you're in there, I normally turn off send optional diagnostic data. I also turn off improve inking and typing. So make sure that is off. I also turn off tailored experiences and I also turn off view diagnostic data. And if you do turn off view diagnostic data, click on the delete diagnostic data and then delete again. And that might clear up a bit of space on your computer. If you scroll down a little bit there, you should see feedback frequency I would always click on the drop down there and set that to never now obviously each of these that I've just turned off there is a description of what they do so read that understand that before you make your choices now another thing I do I go into the old classic control panel so I'm just going to shut this down by clicking on the cross in the top right hand corner and I'm going to click on the start button and I'm going to type the word control on the keyboard and hopefully under best match you should see control panel system left click once on that now when you first open it up you'll probably see this screen here click on category just to the right of view by and then click large icons and then go to power options go to choose when to turn off the display and choose here how long you want before the display actually turns off. And you can also on some systems choose how long it is before you want to put the computer to sleep. Now, more often than not, I set the sleep to never on there because I like to turn my computer off when I want to turn it off. I don't want it going to sleep on me. Sometimes sleep mode can cause problems with certain apps and drivers. So I don't really like it too much. So I'm just going to click the back button just up there. And then next thing I'm going to do is choose what the power buttons do. I'm going to make sure that when I press the power button, that shutdown is selected. So if for any reason I can't use my mouse to go down to the start button and shut down via that menu there, 
I can just push the power button on my laptop or my PC. So once you've selected that, click on Save Changes. And then I'm going to click the back button just up there again on the top left hand corner. And I'm going to keep clicking it until I'm back to this menu here and I'm going to click on system then I'm going to click on system protection and I'm just going to make sure that this is turned on so if it's off like mine is click configure and just click on turn on system protection and just move that bar just there up one notch so it shows one percent then click on apply and then click on OK that means that if you do have any problems, you should be able to restore your PC back to an earlier point in time. So OK that and then click on advanced system settings. And then what we want to do is I want to go into settings there and I'm going to turn off some of these settings because as you can see, when I click on things, they do sort of fade in and fade out. They animate and I don't really want that. I just I, it looks nice, but again, it takes time and it takes up system resources, albeit just a little bit. But as I say, all of these things add up. So I'm going to take the tick out, out of animate controls and elements inside Windows. Animate windows when minimizing and maximizing. Take the tick out of that. Animations in the taskbar. Take the tick out of that. Enable peak. Take the tick out of. Fade or slide menus into view. Take the tick out of. Fade or slide tooltips into view. Take the tick out of. Fade out menu items after clicking. Again, take it out. Leave show shadows under windows. Leave show thumbnails instead of icons. Leave show translucent selection rectangle. Show window contents while dragging. Dragging. Again, leave that. Slide open combo boxes. Take the tick out of that. Leave smooth edges of screen fonts and take the tick out of smooth scroll list boxes and leave drop shadows for icon labels on the desktop. That's what we want. Click on apply. Click on OK. And as you'll notice when I'm clicking on things now, they go, they come up immediately rather than fade into view. Again, like I say, takes up a little bit of power out of the system that does, but much, much quicker, much slicker with uh, without that turned on. Also, a final tip is if you you were used to using Windows 10, I understand, you know, you might have just upgraded to Windows 11 considering support has recently finished for Windows 10, then you might not like the way that this bar or the start button is in the middle of the screen. So if you want to move that back to where it was before, then you can right click anywhere on a blank area of the taskbar, left click taskbar settings and under taskbar behaviors, click on the little drop down. There you go. You've got taskbar alignment. Click on center and then click on left and that brings it over there to the left to make it look a bit more like Windows 10. Click on the cross in the top right hand corner to shut this down. And then one final thing is, is to just check to see what's starting up with your computer. So just right click on the taskbar at the bottom of the screen, move your mouse over task manager, left click. Then when this comes up, what we're looking for here is this little speed dial there. And when you move your mouse over it, it should say start up apps, left click that, and normally I turn off Microsoft Teams if you're not using it. So right click Microsoft Teams, click disable. And if you're not using OneDrive cloud storage, then again, right click OneDrive and then left click disable. And that should stop them from loading every time you turn your computer on. Also, one more thing. If you move your mouse over this here, which might be still on the left hand side if you haven't moved your start bar over, then you probably don't want this coming up every time you, you just accidentally move your mouse over that area. So if you don't want it to open every time you move your mouse down to the bottom left hand corner of the screen, then move your mouse over it to get it to pop up and then click on the cog at the top of the screen there. There you go, the settings cog and just turn off open widgets board on hover. Turn that off. And that will mean when you move your mouse down to the bottom left hand corner of the screen or over that widget, it won't automatically come up. But you can still get it just by left clicking once on it. And there you go. It comes back. So there you go. That is all my tips 
for optimizing Windows 11 and making it look a little bit more like Windows 10. If you've got any tips that you want to suggest, please suggest them in the comments down below.